Well, welcome to this video. We're looking at what proportion of people who are infected with COVID-19 might be asymptomatic. Now, we know that 80% of people who get COVID-19 are reported to have a mild illness. They might just feel minimally unwell or a bit unwell for a few days and then recover. But we know that 20% get a more severe condition. 16% have a serious infection up to the point where they may need some hospital care and support. And we know that 5 or 6% become critically ill. And of course, we know that perhaps 1% go on to die. But I did notice that um, recently Dr. Fauci in the States was saying up to 50% of infected people have no symptoms, which is very interesting. So what this means is there could be lots of people who've had the disease who simply don't know they've had it. Maybe half, half of people get no symptoms at all. In other words, are asymptomatic. Now, this is great for the individuals concerned. But what we don't know is how many of these are going to be infectious. And we would assume if they have the infection, but have no symptoms, that they are still infectious. And uh, infected people can shed 100 billion viral particles in a day, thereby infecting potentially large numbers of other people. As we've seen from the phenomena of super spreaders in previous videos in this series. So this was from British Medical Journal. So I put, I put the reference there and of course I'll put it in the, uh, in the notes. <clears throat> now, the, 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 this is not a, a research article as such, it's more an opinion piece. But if it gets into the British Medical Journal, then it's, it merits us thinking about. So COVID-19, four-fifths of cases are asymptomatic, China figures indicate. So this is saying even higher proportion than Dr. Fauci suspects. This is saying up to four-fifths could be asymptomatic. Now, I mean, that's 80 percent, isn't it, that could be asymptomatic? So, so what, what is the evidence for this? We're not saying it's true yet. But this, is, this is what this is. This is discussing. So new evidence from China. The large majority of coronavirus infections are asymptomatic, according to this study. Now, where did this come from? Now, it's a very limited data size, and I've been eagerly looking out for more data, but haven't found any yet. But hopefully we will. Now, what happened was in China, they started approaching things from the 1st of April in a more... A prospective way looking forward and they started collecting data on all their new cases because the number of new cases in, now in China is relatively low so this gave opportunity for prospective studies so so far a lot of the studies have been retrospective looking back what has happened prospective data is saying well it's today I'm going to collect data from now on and of course, that means we can collect exactly the data we want. So prospective studies are potentially much more valid than retrospective studies in research. And what they found was um, <clears throat> 130 of 166 new infections, which equals 78 percent, identified in the 24 hours to the afternoon of Wednesday, the 1st of April. So this is when they started collecting new samples from new people. So a lot of these were people coming into the country. So to get into China now, most places you have to do a test to get in to see if you're positive or not. So they were taking people who were coming in to the country and combine that with people that they were testing in the country. And when they combine those two together, they found that 78% were showing no symptoms. So a lot of people were trying to get into China feeling fine, but when they were tested found to have the virus and this just shows the importance of testing because testing is a searchlight that illuminates the virus the virus can't hide from testing whereas it's hiding from us a lot at the moment just shows how why we need so much more testing so what they found is of all the people that they tested for 100 that came up positive for the virus 78 at that point had no symptoms and this is interesting. Now, <clears throat> it could mean that they are pre-symptomatic because we know that people are infectious for a few days before they develop symptoms. But it could also mean that some of these were genuinely asymptomatic and were never going to develop symptoms. So the data doesn't allow us to differentiate between those two categories yet. But the fact that 78 percent 
could be shedding the virus up to 100 billion viral particles a day but had no symptoms could explain some of the spread that we have seen around the world. Now, the other thing that this means is if, if it's been spreading for longer than we thought, the virus could be already fairly widespread. Now, I have been saying, suspecting this for some time. So if we look at the relatively high death rates in my country now, for example, these people that are dying now probably had their day one, the first day they were symptomatic, two, three, four, five weeks ago, even potentially more. So easily between two and four weeks ago. So that means they would have a two to 14 day incubation period before that. So that means these people picked the infection up way before the lockdown and they picked it up mostly by community spread. The virus was spreading from person to person. And that is true in pretty well every country in the world except Australia. Most cases in Australia are still uh, from people outside the country. But Australia's got a lot of testing, so they've got a good handle on that. Whereas in most other countries, we don't know. So the virus was probably community spreading much earlier than we thought. Certainly in my country, it could have been spreading mid-February via community spread. So this gives an interesting possibility that many more people could already be infected <clears throat> than, than we thought, just that they are uh, asymptomatic. So uh, infected, asymptomatic, infected people, what we need to do is identify who they are, because so far, in my country at least, and in most countries, we haven't been doing this. So we need to identify these people with testing. This is just another illustration of why testing is so important. Then we can isolate people with the virus and we can quarantine their contacts. And this allows us to be much more precise, much more surgical in the way that we are attacking this virus rather than just clobbering everyone in the community. Now, the South China Morning Post we're quoting classified data, so we can't get this, but there's no reason to assume they're lying about it. Um, China had found 43,000 asymptomatic infections through contact tracing. 43,000. <clears> in, other, in other words, what, what this is saying is that someone was known to have the virus. So the Chinese community health people, whether that person was known to have the virus was symptomatic or not doesn't matter. The point is someone was tested to have the virus. And then they looked at who their contacts were, who could have potentially been infected. And when they tested those contacts, they found out that 43,000 of those were asymptomatic. Now, it would have been nice to know this in January, I must say. When the Chinese became aware of this, we don't know. Maybe that's why that's classified. Now, having said that, Many of us were warning about this virus in January, so whether other governments around the world would have known. But certainly if we'd known that there was 43,000 asymptomatic people in China potentially spreading 100 billion viral particles a day each, that would have been useful information to have a long time ago. But we didn't have it, but now we have. And it's interesting. So were these people asymptomatic, pre-symptomatic, we're not told, but it looks like many were completely asymptomatic. So again, this Chinese data from the Chinese Morning Post is saying, well, many people have the virus and we've tested 43,000 of them who turned out to have the virus but had no symptoms. Interesting. Now, this, it's interesting to note, contradicts the World Health Organization assumptions. Now, up until recently, the World Health Organization was saying most transmission is driven by symptomatic individuals. And they were saying, and in fact, I, still, I think they still are saying asymptomatics are rare and not major drivers of transmission. Well, it looks like, if this data is correct, the World Health Organization have got it wrong yet again. That's what it looks like. Now... <clears throat> This is another study. Uh, oh, no, this is the same one. Uh, th th this guy, this uh, prof uh, Italian professor guy, um, professor of clinical immunology at the University of Florence in North Italy, beautiful town in North Italy, 
claims evidence that most people infected by the virus do not show symptoms. So um, this, this professor is claiming that he agrees with this, most. So Dr. Fauci is saying 50%. This Chinese study is saying 78%. And this guy is saying that most people infected with the virus don't show symptoms, which is good for them. Uh, and uh, that's great. But, of course, they could be spreading it. So an isolated village, roughly 3,000 people in northern Italy, saw the number of people with COVID-19 fall by over 90% within 10 days by isolating people who were symptomatic and asymptomatic. Now, this is, this is the study the professors are quoting. I'm not going to even pronounce, try and pronounce Sergio's uh, name. Let's just call him Professor Sergio. <laughs> I'm sure he won't mind. So... He had in mind this village. So there's an isolated village where they tested 3,000 people in northern Italy, which, of course, was the epicentre of the European uh, outbreak. And they tested 3,000 people. Now, if they tested 3,000 people, that means they would find the people that tested positive and were symptomatic. But it also means they'd find the number of people that tested positive and were asymptomatic. So this means they were able to isolate all people who was positive for the virus, whether they were symptomatic or asymptomatic. In other words, they could isolate everyone. And the result was um, the number of people with COVID-19 symptoms fell by 90%, over 90% within 10 days. So let me ask, would you like to reduce the number of people with symptoms of COVID-19 in your country, would you like to reduce that number by 90% in 10 days time? Well, the answer is yes, we would love to do that. Well, this Italian data is saying, well, you can do that. All you've got to do is test everyone. Then people that are symptomatic and positive for the virus, you isolate them. And people that are asymptomatic, that are positive for the virus, you isolate them in exactly the same way. So this means if we knew everyone who had the virus now, if we had testing, because 3,000 is a good number. You can extrapolate up from 3,000 fairly accurately. Um, if we knew that, then we could reduce the symptomatic people by 90% within 10 days. That means we reduce the sick people by 90%, the critical people by 90%, and it means we reduce the deaths by 90%. Although there would be a lag time between people becoming critical and dying of a, a longer than that. But the symptomatic people within 10 days, then deaths would go down in the two, three, four weeks after that. If we could see where this virus was. So this example where everyone was tested, we could see there where the virus is. You can really have dramatic effects on the spread of this virus by targeted isolation, targeted quarantine. But of course, the only way we can do this on a population scale, so in my country with 60 million people, we would need 60 million tests. It's coming, but it's not there yet. So how many people in Europe, for example, have been exposed to the virus and have some immunity? Is it 2%? Is it 5%? Is it 10%? We really don't know because we don't have enough testing. But it could well be 5 to 10%. So the encouraging thing here is we could be further on in the curve than we thought. But if we want dramatic improvements, we need dramatic increase in testing. Then we can isolate people that are infected. Everyone else can go back to work. And we can expect symptomatic people to reduce by 90% over 10 days.